At first, their journey was delightful. The night had been going on for so many hours that the sand had almost finished giving back all the sun heat it had received during the day. And the air was cool, fresh, and clear. Under the moonlight, the sand gleamed as if it was smooth water or a great silver tray. Except for the noise of breeze and wind's hoofs, there was not a sound to be heard. Shasta would nearly have fallen asleep if he'd not had to dismount and walk every now and then. It was during one of their walks that Shasta and Aravis filled in the missing pieces of their stories. So I waited for you by the tombs, hoping you were safe. Or that you hadn't left me behind. Left you behind? We would not be so dishonourable. So what happened to you then? Well, after I saw you hurried away by the Narnians, I grabbed Bree's halter and waited for a moment. Oh, I wasn't sure what to do, except to move on to a place where I could think and confer privately with Bree and Wynne. But before we could go, another parade came through with servants carrying a litter. This one contained another Tarkina, called Lazarily. Fortunately, I know her well. We have often stayed in the same houses and been to the same parties. She saw me in the crowd and cried out for me. Without a second's delay, I let go of the horses and leapt into her litter. <coughs> Erevis, what on earth are you doing here? Your father... Shut up! Do you hear? You must hide me. Tell your people. But darling... Do what I tell you, or I'll never speak to you again. Please, please be quick. Tell your people to bring those two horses along. Pull all the curtains of the litter and get away somewhere where I can't be found. Oh, and do hurry! All right, darling. Here, you slave, take the Tarkina's horses. And now home. Yes, ma'am. I say, darling, do you think we really want the curtains drawn on a day like this? I mean to say... Yeah. Yes! I mustn't be seen! My father doesn't know I'm here. I'm running away. My dear, how perfectly thrilling. I'm dying to hear all about it. Darling, you're sitting on my dress. Oh, do you mind? That's better. It's a new one. Do you like it? I got it at oh, the Oh, Lazaraline, most... do be serious. Where is my father? Didn't you know? He's here, of course. He came to town yesterday and is asking about you everywhere. And to think of you and me being here together and he's not knowing anything about it. <laughs> it's the funniest thing I ever heard. It isn't <laughs> funny at all. It's dreadfully serious. Where can you hide me? Oh, no difficulty at all, my dear girl. I'll take you home. My husband's away. No one will see you. <sighs> it's not much fun with the curtains drawn. I want to see people. There's no point in having a new dress on if one's going to go about shut up like this. Oh, another thing. You must tell your people to treat those two horses very respectfully. That's part of the secret. They're really talking horses from Narnia. Fancy, how exciting. And oh, darling, have you seen the barbarian queen from Narnia? She's staying in Tashban at present. They say Prince Rabadash is madly in love with her. There have been the most wonderful parties and hunts and things all the last fortnight. I can't see she's so very pretty myself. But some of the Narnian men are lovely. I was taken out on a river party the day before yesterday. Miss Aveline, yes how shall we prevent your people telling everyone that you've got a visitor? Dressed like a beggar's brat in your house. Oh, it might so easily get round to my father. Now, don't keep on fussing, dear. We'll get you some proper clothes in a moment. And here we are. Now listen, all of you. And you, doorkeeper. No one is to be let out of the house today. And anyone I catch talking about this young lady will first be beaten to death and then burned alive and after that be kept on bread and water for the next six weeks. There. Oh, weren't you afraid she'd still give you away? Oh, every minute I was with her. But I didn't have a choice. Besides, Lazaraline wasn't really interested in my circumstances. She is, in fact, much better at talking than listening. So she talked and talked while I ate, had a bath and changed clothes. I heard all about her wardrobe and her parties and all the latest gossip. Finally, she surprised me by asking why I was running away from home. After I told her the whole story, and she tried to talk me into marrying a Hoshta anyway, I persuaded her to help me come up with a plan of escape. And what was your plan? Yes, what is your plan, darling? I want you to instruct one of your grooms to fill my horse's saddlebags with provisions and water, and then take them to the tombs. Mm. He is to wait for me there. No one would think twice of a groom with two horses leaving the city. But what about me? 
I suppose I could be carried out in the litter with the curtains drawn. Oh, darling, that will never do. Litters are only used inside the city. The sight of one going out through the gate would lead to questions. Oh, I have an idea. There is one way of getting out of the city without using the gates. The Tisrock's garden, may he live forever, runs right down to the water and there's a little water door. Only for palace people, of course, but then you know, dear, we almost are palace people. I say it is lucky for you that you came to me. Why shouldn't I slip in with you after dark and let you out by the water door? There are always a few punts and things tied up outside it. And even if we were caught, all would be lost. Oh, darling, don't get so excited. I was only going to say, even if we were caught, everyone would only say it was one of my mad jokes. I'm getting quite well known for them. Only the other day... Do listen, dear, this is frightfully funny. I meant all would be lost for me. Oh, yes, I do see what you mean, darling. Well, can you think of any better plan? No, we'll have to risk it. When can we start? Oh, not tonight. Of course not tonight. There's a great feast on, and I must start getting my hair done for it in only a few minutes. And the whole place will be a blaze of lights, and such a crowd, too. It would have to be tomorrow night. So you had an entire night, and the following day, eating the best food, sleeping on the best beds, listening to Lazeroling giggle and talk about dresses and parties and weddings and engagements and scandals. Well, it was nice to sleep in a comfortable bed, I admit. But I thought I would go mad with the rest of it. She also tried to talk me out of running away to Narnia at all. I've heard that it is a country of perpetual snow and ice and is inhabited by demons and sorcerers. You're simply mad to think of going there. And with a peasant boy, too. Darling, think of it. It's not nice. Just before the sunset, I went down to the stables and explained to Bree and Gwyn my plan. Then I suffered with Lazeroline, and about two hours later we were ready to start. I was dressed to look like a superior slave girl in a great house and wore a veil over my face. We agreed that if any questions were asked, Lazeroline would pretend that I was a slave she was taking as a present to one of the princesses. Finally we went to the palace. The guards knew Lazeroline and let us through. After that, we were merely two more women in a household of courtiers, slaves and guests. We eventually reached the old palace, but it had grown quite dark and we found ourselves in a maze of corridors lit only by occasional torches. Oh, it was only a matter of time. She got you lost, didn't she? Oh, hopelessly lost. We stopped in a corridor to get our sense of direction. Then we heard voices coming. Then Lazeroline saw the shapes of two men walking backwards, carrying tall candles. And she realised it was only royalty who get to have people walk backwards in front of them. She panicked and dragged me into a nearby room. It was a bad choice. Why? It was one of the Tisrock's chambers. Yes, yes. May he live forever. Afraid that someone might come in, we hid behind a sofa until we were sure it was safe. Just when we thought it was, the door opened. Who came in? The Tisrock! May he live forever. And Prince Rabadash! Oh, we thought we were doomed. We were then convinced of it when we heard why the two of them were meeting so secretly.